pension age. All morning I've been contacted by people from France, from America and from towns and villages around this country to say that while they can't be here with us physically, they are here with us in spirit. This has got to be the worst and best of days for Ireland. Who would have thought when two months ago we marched in this very spot to demand the right to choice? Who would have thought then that we would be back here today? That so soon the event that we all hoped would never happen actually tragically did. That a vibrant, healthy, wonderful young woman starting her family life has needlessly died. And died because of the failure of successive governments to deal with this issue. In fact, death by political cowardice. And shame on them! magnificent numbers to first and foremost stand and mourn and express solidarity with Savita and her family but on the other hand not just that because she deserves more than that to deliver a clear and unambiguous message no more 20 years ago a social movement forced the Supreme Court to act 20 years on now, this is another social movement sparked by another tragic event. But this isn't 20 years ago. And this time, we're not going back to wait for a third tragedy. This time, we're not waiting 20 years, we're not waiting 10 years, and we're not waiting one year. We want action on these issues now. when myself, uh, Nick Wallace and Joan Collins move legislation supported by the United Left Alliance to legislate for X, we were told that that legislation wasn't necessary. We were told to wait for the expert group. Now clearly it was necessary because Savita wasn't even pregnant then, now she's dead, but also we have the expert group. And what is the response from our government? Well, Enda Kenny says he's not going to be rushed on the matter. This man has some definition of being rushed. This political pygmy has sat in Dáil Éireann for over 30 years while 150,000 Irish women have been exported. Now the last couple of points 
John make is that we're here to let it be known that if this government doesn't act within the next week, we will move to reintroduce our bill as an interim measure to protect women's lives and a first step in dealing with the broader issues. When we do that, will you be there to demand that this time they act on it? Because that's what we need. And let's be honest about it. It's clear that that's not enough. The ex case legislation isn't enough. That we would have to wait until they're dying before they get treatment to assist in their health. But to get to the next stage, we have to remove the Eighth Amendment before all of the other issues can be addressed. And we will be going on to that challenge after this one. The last point I want to make is that this morning I received an email from a 67-year-old man. And he said he had heard these stories and this debate so many times over the decades. And he said, the time has come to cut through the knots that we've been tied up in by people who are as slippery as eels and as cold as stone. He went on to say, these self-appointed guardians of the threshold have ruled the roost for so long they think they own the perch. The time's up, lads. Get off your perch because people won't stand for it any longer. You have done a wonderful thing here today. But out of this terrible tragedy, we may build a better future. Don't let them off the hook. Don't come back and wait until the next tragedy. The pressure has to be kept up. Only people power will deliver on this issue. So don't go home. Come back again in the next week or two. For Savita, for my daughter, for your sister, your mother, your wife, your friend. Never again! <laughs> by saying this, no woman who requests an abortion should have her decision overruled by a doctor, a judge, or a bishop. We have had enough of that, enough of that. And if we were to sum up as doctors what Savita's law should be, it's this simple, it's a woman's right to choose. That's it.